Yeah, we've never been to Australia before. Oh gosh, this would be your first time, wouldn't it, if I'm not mistaken? Yes. You stoked yeah. for some sunshine? Oh yeah, very much so. Um, the, I mean, the whole, the whole country will, be, of course, be very exotic. Uh, everybody's looking forward tremendously to it. Uh, we're doing one, two, three, four shows in, in Australia and one in uh, New Zealand, I believe. Oh, that'd be cool. Not many people make the, uh, yeah. the extra little jump over there to New Zealand. Oh, we're going to Wellington to play there. Some nice show there. It'd be great. I mean, we're really looking forward to it, of course. I mean, just the, the climate and everything. You know, just a certain type of excitement uh, connected to visiting the shores that you've never been to before. Well, speaking of the Australia side of things, is there any Australian bands you're actually listening to and kind of excited about? Well, first one that comes to mind is obviously your biggest band in Australia, I guess. Easy, easy. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard to go wrong. No, that's exactly what we want. Now, let's let's bring things a little bit back, because um, you guys, uh, you had your album last year. I assume that's going to be the, the focus for this tour a bit? Yeah, that's the most current album still, so that will be, that'll be the one. Do you guys try to mix up the, a lot of the old catalogue, or do you... Yeah, sure, no, we, we do, we do mix up with, uh, with the old stuff as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, we try to include, you know, all, all the albums, uh, to a certain extent, but obviously it's like the things that we played, like in, in Europe and the States where we played before, and it's been um, kind of mixed and match because we played we played uh, a lot of the stuff there before, but it, like for Australia, it's kind of crucial to bring some something from every album, I believe, since yeah. we've never been there before. It's, yeah, I was going to say, especially because we haven't had the, the chance to, to destroy ourselves listening to it, which is how a gig should go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask the kangaroos what they like. <laughs> <laughs> they love anything they can jump to. That's the kind of groove they want. <laughs> nice. Can't wait. Oh, I love animals, so it's going to be great. I, I, really, I want to see the... That's something I really look forward to as well, to see the, like, the animal kingdom of yours. Okay. You think you'll have time to, to go out there and explore a couple of the zoos and the wildlife parks? Uh, I really hope so. We set up uh, set, a, set off a couple of days to, for off dates so that we have some time to, just, you know, that actually consume some of what, what Australia is as well, not just play and, you know, reg- regular playing and sleeping in hotel and some time off. I was going to say, hey, consume the wildlife? Is that the idea you had there? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, yeah. But, uh, and as well, there is, well, kangaroo is pretty easily available and quite delicious too. Oh, yeah, you should. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't need meat myself, but yeah, sure. Oh, so a kangaroo <laughs> is barely an animal. It's just a jerk. You can eat as much of it as you like, guilt-free. <laughs> the only edible national em- emblem in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, getting way off, off topic. No, I'm loving it. Right? <laughs> uh, now, the band name, 1349, I've been trying to look up and get into. Where did where did this come from? Uh, it actually stems from uh, the year when the Black Plague hit Norway. Um, back in the day when uh, two-thirds of Norway's population was killed mm-hmm. from this plague. That's and, pretty intense. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a suitable name we figured. Uh, well, Raven came up with that name when he started the band, together with Chalva, our previous guitarist, and uh, Sidemon, the bassist. And then that's, uh, that's the name that it, uh, they decided to go with. And it's traditional, and it gets us uh, high up on the billing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the, alphabetical, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my co-host Fraser here under the bus a little bit. Oh, I, I actually explained yeah. that to him a little bit because uh, I knew a little bit about you guys. And um, in his mind, he thought that 1349 was the year the black metal came to Norway. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I wish. I guess. Yeah, we do. <laughs> That'd be exciting to see where we are right now. Now, um, speaking of, of sort of going back to those influences, obviously you're not listening to bands from the 14th century, but. <laughs> What was it that sort of that kicked you guys up? We're always interested in finding the, the origins of, of legends like yourselves. Well, uh, to be honest with you, it's a lot of... Uh, I mean, you kind of go back in circles, you know? I mean, you started to listen to... Of course, we all come from, like, hard rock and heavy metal, mm. to a certain extent, but uh, really, it just comes full circle with, with, uh, with age, I guess. Because now, the light, later years, we all, we all had a mutual um, passion for... Bands such as, you know, um, The Devil's Blood, Black Sabbath, mm. Deep Purple, uh, just Blue Oyster Cult, you know, all the, all the mm. 70s classic bands, Thin Lizzy, not forgetting Thin Lizzy. <laughs> um, you know, 
all the, the classic heavy metal bands, the one that started it all. It's hard to um, sort of get away from that. Yeah, you know, it's, it basically all comes back to that in, at the end of the day, I guess. I mean, of course, there's a uh, lot of black metal bands that started it, and that, that will, uh, will have to be mentioned, because it's, uh, it's like rediscovering heavy metal in a different suit, really. And uh, or giving a new spark of life, you know. Yeah, I'd agree. At the moment in Australia, we've got a um, an incredible boom of, of black and death metal uh, right now, uh, making yeah. some really interesting and, and diverse sort of decisions. Um, right. Uh, and one of the things I was sort of curious about is how do you think the Norway scene has sort of changed since you guys started compared to now? Has it evolved a lot? Or is it just sort of refining what you guys sort of did back in your day? Well. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't followed the scene for a little while, but uh, but every now and then I just like I hear things that are that are exciting. Uh, so there, there are people working on, on at least you know um, evolving the, the the form of art, uh, but it's very slowly happening because you know a lot of it is a lot of what I hear is it's a bit of stereotypical mediocre, you know, a lot of same things. <laughs> Of course, it's, it's alive, uh, definitely, but uh, it's kind of polarized. It's uh, all over the place now, you know. I guess maybe you've heard like bands like Killer Talk. Mm. Oh no, I haven't actually. Yeah. No, it's a uh, it's more like it's a mixture between like uh, it's got black influences. It's got more like a more modern, contemporary metal, and uh, yeah, I don't know actually <laughs> what it's called. But it's, uh, I feel like I guess I'm stuck in a lot of old stuff, you know. Is it is it sort of the case because um uh, I mentioned that we've got a, a lot of death in black metal. Is it the case where maybe sixty seven percent of it is sort of mediocre and whatever, but the few people yeah. who stand out they they stand out because they had to do something, they had to push it somewhere else. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, although those that actually manage too, yeah. I mean, there's some some of the some of the classic fans have also you know, taken part of that, but. Uh, like the newer bands, uh, I mean, I even heard a lot of good stuff coming out from. Um, there, there's been a lot of activity from the states, I know. Oh, uh, in terms of nuts, yeah, yeah. Like uh, you heard wolves in the throne room. No, uh, again, you, see, no. I'm, I've got a pen and paper here, just ready for when you mention a new band for me. I'm loving this. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah wolves in the throne room is a pretty good band that uh, that our bassist introduced before uh, oh. some years ago. And uh, I remember we went to check them out live, and that was fantastic, brilliant band. Um, but yeah, there's, there's several, there's several just I just need to come to mind, you know, like quick, like now. But uh, there are there are a lot of good bands out there. Yeah, I don't want to put you on the spot. I was just interested to see sort of because obviously you you've been defining the scene. I'm always excited to hear what people oh, who, who are now I remember big. one of my favorite bands from your your source is of course Wolf Mother. Oh yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. They've got that cool, like, classic rock groove thing going on, which is right, fun. Right, right. Yeah, they've got that Led Zeppelin influence hammering yeah. through. Yeah, I saw them in 2007 in Norway uh, on the first album, and that was killer. But, I mean, uh, I kind of, I was about to boycott them when I heard, you know, that uh, this was a split within the band. And yeah. One member, I was like, ah. Yeah. One, of, one, of my fr- one of my friends, he told me, you got to check it out. So I checked out that album, The Cosmic Egg, the second one. Yeah. Found that it was even better than the first one. It's an amazing band. They're amazing. So yeah, Wolf, Wolf Mother would be very hard not to mention. You ask me about uh, bands from Australia. I forgot. <laughs> it's a very good, a uh, very good band. Fair enough. Well, yeah, we like to think we like to think we're doing fairly well over here. Uh, now, but yeah. looking towards the future, we know you guys are touring next year. Are we going to get an album anytime soon? Yeah, we'll be working on that. I mean, there are ideas now, but it's only on the stage, uh, at, the, at the stage of ideas, you know. So, so but uh, we will still have some touring activity in the new year. Uh, there are a couple of festivals booked for, like, Finland. I know one in Norway. There's some touring. Most probably we will visit the States one, at least one more time. Uh, maybe, maybe Mexico, perhaps. Come over to you guys. Yes. Uh, and then we'll see. We'll see how it uh, pans out. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, by that time as well, there will be movement in terms of the new material. And uh, we don't need to rush at all, you know? <laughs> yeah. You can't, it, can't be, it can't be rushed because then uh, 
I mean, we, we can't afford to just create something just to create something. I mean, that would kill, for well, first, it would kill the passion. Second, it would degrade and uh, knock the feet over under what, what we were doing, you know. So, we'll take it, take its time, but but I suppose it won't take another two years, you know. Yeah, it will be yeah. Guns N' Roses style. Yeah. Wait. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you don't want to undercook it at the same, at the same time. Um, no, uh, right. I always like to, to give the people we chat to uh, a yeah. moment to brag about what they do. Um, when you're when you're playing uh, on the on the album, what what specifically are you trying to accomplish with your your guitar work? Oh, I try to make it. Uh, I try to maintain uh, the, the spirit and the, the the you know the feeling that is that is, that's always been in the band. That's a very essential thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're if the band has got an uh, identity, then uh, I, think I, I really believe sincerely that that is important to keep to maintain. Uh, also. Of course, the challenge uh, is to evolve at the same time, yeah. and, uh, and that's something that I find very intriguing to to chase after. And uh, I think uh, that's probably the the main main part, uh, you know, to try to come up with new or inventive ways of of playing, trying to to make good arrangements, trying to think more, think uh, like a small orchestra instead of one instrument. Oh yeah. So it's a yeah, it's all is a part of a bigger picture, and uh, yeah, that's a composition bit, you know. But in, and then in the studio, it's just all very focused. We're all very focused. We're also open for new things. I mean, we're, we're not like a shut book thirty four nine. So when we go in the studio, things still might change, you know, all along the way until until it's on tape and we're happy with it. So yeah, it's like the, the idea is to sound like yourself. But who you are yeah. as a band changes every album and every song, right? Right. And I mean, a good example is, you know, Demon Roar, our previous album. Mm. Yeah. Um, when we were in the studio there, uh, I remember vividly, we we were at, uh, you know, we record all the albums. We've done a part of the first album. We record at uh, Ronnie Lea Seeker studio, the guy from the guitarist from TNT. <laughs> Uh, uh, we were up there, and that's kind of a, it's more like a cultural society, really. So it's like a lot of artists of all kinds of, you know, light, lightning art, light artists, painters. And uh, when we recorded Demon Noir back in 2008, then um, then he, we actually met up with a lot of different, uh, a lot of different artists. Where some were from the Horn Orchestra, and we didn't know what that was, but. Uh, Particularly Benjamin, I remember Tony Bjorn Benjaminson. I remember he he came uh, with his he, he played on reindeer, uh, reindeer antlers. <laughs> so <laughs> what, what on earth is that about? Basically, he put on a pickup and strung uh, a reindeer horn, you know, oh. or ant- antler, uh, which which uh, produced crazy crazy sound that was uh, no nowhere to be heard before. Um, they used this in, in his orchestra. They all played on on uh, instruments that was made from animals. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's all good, but uh, you know, when when the instrument is there and the possibility of using it, u- utilizing it in a unique way, giving a unique result, then of course we we went on with that. Also, we found a, a jazz uh, piano piano or yeah piano keyboardist guy mm. uh, called Tony Caputo. He used to play in a band called Lynx back in the day. He's from Can- he's of Canadian origin. And he put some piano on that album, so wow. so we had a, we had some special uh, not not exactly art by accident, but kind of you know. Yeah, I'm always fascinated by the intersection of metal and jazz because so many metalheads that I know they they turn their notes yeah. up at that that style, but I think there's definitely right. connection there. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I find that to be a very very um, narrow-minded thing to do. Mm. Now, one uh, one question we like to ask everyone is: uh, Do you remember your very first thirteen forty nine gig? Yeah, yeah, sure, vividly. I remember it like not like it was yesterday, but I still remember very well. It was uh, a club called Vega in Oslo in uh, the year two thousand or two thousand one, the New Year's Eve, actually. I'm pretty sure I've actually been to that club. It's an awesome little place. I was there yeah, very in Oslo for like three days, and I just went out and had a few drinks there because it was yeah, that metal be. scene. Yeah, small stage called Vega. Ah, 
<laughs> my, if my time had been just uh, about 10 years better, I would have been able to see yeah. you. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. I love, it. I love it when people come back to their first moment. I think there's a moment of nostalgia there that we really appreciate on the show. We're just about out of time here, okay? Oh, listen, this has been a delight, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys will be in the country uh, in February. Um, I guess we'll have to wait till then. <laughs> well, have a terrific day, guys. Thanks so much, Thanks man. So much. Have a good time. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.